One of the neatest things about this event is that they do an open house and they allow the general public and other campers to come and tour the insides of these trailers and RVs. And it is so neat to see all the little personal touches people have added. This one, however, has to be one of my personal favorites. I love what they've done with this and how the outside just got left uh, shabby looking and so it is a total sleeper. It looks nothing on the inside like what it looks like on the outside. It is over the top cool. Dimmer switch. Well the original stove is in the RV Museum in Elkhart, Indiana. The previous owner had taken it and gave it to them and then they gave it him a period correct stove. Oh, yeah. But not the one for yeah. this.
living now.
then you ring that one. Pull that one, yeah. <laughs> it's almost like you're at a filling station. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Been on wagon wheels. Yeah, and, but still. Yeah. And the Reddings, they had very large wheels in the back, very small wheels in the front, and all the luggage went underneath. So they sat very high. Mm -hmm. Your horses would have been here. You would have just shut this lower door, the Dutch door, and then you'd have your reins right up there. Oh, you wow. You stood there and run your horses. So uh, this turns into a bed then? It, yes. The and then obviously you got a little benches. bunk up here, it looks like, or something. Yeah, we put the grandkids up there. Uh-huh. Uh, the, the bed roll is back behind the table, and it comes out so we can see oh, the stars. Oh, nice. That's awesome. Yeah. The layout is the same <clears throat> for that period, except in Europe, the stove would have been on the other side. Mm. Uh, that way, because, you know, they <clears throat> drive on the left side. Mm -hmm. uh, so you want your stove pipe away from the tree mm. line. Gotcha. So, but we're here in America, so it's on this side. Yeah. Uh, That's of course, awesome. they would not. Mm -hmm. So, but the Molly Croft is the same. Man, they would have had stained glass inside, just like. It's so cool. Oh, and it protects the glass uh -huh. when it's in the road, too. Oops. A lot of work. Yeah. And these shelves are fixed. So. so cool. I love the turn signals. Like a real carriage. So cool. Then the air conditioner. Feel it right here. Mm -hmm. I love the way you hit the air conditioner too. Yeah, yeah. I hate going to parks and you have the giant ones. Yes, yes. So we, we went to some yard sales and it was the same thing at both of them. You go, you find a junk box and it has. To
brand new in 1972. Oh my gosh. Uh, they took it on fam fam family vacations. They took it to uh, Niagara Falls. Uh, wow. Mount Rushmore, Yellowstone, Florida. Uh, they were only allowed to be on the beach for 15 minutes in Florida. <laughs> so they didn't, they didn't get sand on the camper. And I mean, everything was original. It's amazing. <laughs> Well, as soon as you pull in and see one with green screens, you know it's original canvas. And the only other thing, I still have the, I still have the, uh, the awning hardware, but the awning, oh, okay. the awning, I don't know, yeah. if it was gone long before, before I had it. Look, the curtains, I love the curtains, they're killer. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I got a couch next The upholstery? Yeah. Wow. So cool. Ceiling uh, wallpaper. Mm -hmm. Still got the avocado sink and stove. And yeah, like I said, I think Gosh. everything, as far as I know, everything is original. Traveler. Too cool. It isn't a camping trip with us without at least one day of rain. And there's nothing quite like enduring a storm like this in a canvas tent trailer. But the trailer did great. This fabric is awesome. Uh, at one point, the winds kind of picked up. It rained really, really hard for about an hour, and the winds picked up. And I thought, well, I probably better sit out on this stuff and just keep an eye on things. But I sat out there for a couple hours and watched the storm roll in and roll out. It was really quite enjoyable. It always seems that the week comes to a close way too quickly. I do enjoy seeing all the vintage rigs and rides hooked up and headed for home, but it does make me kind of sad knowing we're not going to see everybody again till next year. I think we had about 85 campers this year, 86, something like that. We're going to shoot for 100 next year. If you would like to be a part of such an amazing event, I'm going to put some information down in the description. We would love to have you join us. It's the people that make this such an amazing event, as well as our passion and shared love for all things old and vintage. I'd like to say a special thanks to the Spring Mill State Park and the state of Indiana for permitting me to fly drone. I truly appreciate it and feel very privileged to have been given the opportunity. And a special thanks also to our event organizers, Jim and Sarah, and their volunteers. Without them, this certainly is not possible. Until next year, we'll see y'all. Be safe. All right.
Be safe. See you soon. I love it. The wind was so bad here you couldn't hear what I said, but I say you might be a redneck <laughs> if you work on your vehicle in a Dollar General store parking lot. We don't like to live life dull. Living life dull is boring. We like events where people don't get hurt, but it makes you think outside the box. <laughs> We've had two such events at this rally. Once down, once back. Same truck. There's the problem child. Oh, and rescued a VW on the way too. Actually Chad did that. Life's never dull. Keep it interesting. And never a dull moment. 30 miles down the road later, the Land Rover and I hit a rather rough bump, knocking the ignition wire so that it touched something metal, blew the fuse in it, and I had to hotwire it to get it home. Mom captured this picture from the Winnebago. It was kind of getting comical at this point, so we managed to make it home safely with all of the toys.